Well, anyway, it is. It says it's 96 out. It said it was 98 out before, so we're somewhere between 95 and 100 degrees out today. And uh, that is pretty darn hot in my book. I, I don't. I don't really care for the weather when it gets above 90 or below 20 degrees. I'm fine with anything between 20 and 90 degrees. Uh, actually, I'm a little happier with 30 to 90 maybe, but like once it hits below 20, that's just brutal. And once it hits above 90, it starts to get really brutal as well. Uh, so anyway, it's supposed to be hot for the at least the next I looked at the 10-day forecast and it's going to hit 90, I think, every day. I had to change my, um, I had to change my, uh, heat pump, uh, shelter today. Heat pump does heat and AC if you don't have one. Uh, some areas of the country, they don't have them. They, they, they don't work really well in really cold areas because the heat pump it's very inefficient once it gets, I guess, below 40 degrees. But anyway, I have a heat pump and I had to change the filter today. And I was, I was wondering, I really don't want to do it. Because, you know, every time you turn off, well, I haven't really had any problems recently. But I remember when I was, uh, when I was a kid, any time you would turn off the, the, the air conditioning or the heater, it's like, you never knew if it was going to go back on again. So I was thinking, do I really want to change the air filter today? Because if I change the air filter and didn't go back on, that would really not be good. And uh, so I looked at the forecast and it said it's going to be 90 the next, um, next 10 days forecast at least. So there was no let up in the next 10 days. They're not predicting a let up. And so who knows how long it will go on after that. So I thought, you know, I was thinking, when can I change this? Should I wait until early in the morning or late at night or something? And it probably weekend probably isn't the best time anyway because it's probably harder to get somebody out to repair it if it didn't, hadn't gone back on. But I decided to risk it because I thought, you know, I need to really change it. So I turned off the, went to the breaker box, turned off the heat pump, and I went outside. And uh, definitely it was dirty, but it probably could have gone a little bit longer. It was, wasn't super important to change it, but I, I tried to do it around the solstices. And I think I was late the last solstice. Uh, or not the last, we just had the solstice. Solstice, yeah, we did the summer solstice. I didn't, didn't change it. I'm a few, I'm like a couple weeks late. And I'm, but I was late for spring, too. So, um, for the uh, equinox. So, I figured maybe I should, uh, I, should, I should probably check it. I should probably change it. So, I got to make sure I had a filter before I turned it off. Well, then that would have been a bummer not to have a filter and, you know, you turn it off and it would go back off. And I went out there, I turned off the, the breaker and went out there. It's always hard to get the, in my furnace at least, it's hard to get the particular filter out because of the pressure of the air, it pushes the filter and it kind of warps it slightly. And there's not a lot of extra leeway in that, um, the slot that you push it into. So I had to put it in there, or get that out. Uh, I managed to get it out somehow, and then put the other one slid in fine because it hadn't been warped yet. And I turned it back on, and fortunately, I know, because, uh, you know, talking to the people that work on my uh, furnace, I know that uh, it takes about five minutes when you turn off this particular heat pump. It, it, it waits, the thermostat waits to turn it back on when, once it's been off because, I don't know, it's, it's some sort of protection thing. Is it, so, like, if the electricity went out, it waits a little so things stabilize, I guess. I don't know. Well, my thermostat is wireless to the heat pump because I have an older house and the wire that was 
went from the uh, utility room in the backyard where the heat pump is into the house. I think it had three connectors instead of four. I guess they used to use three connectors on, on the wire, now they use four. And uh, so they would have had to have pulled another wire. And just the way the house is, it's like, yeah, you know, you know, they pulled it probably before they had the drywall and everything on. So there was no easy path to get it in there. And in fact, they had replaced the wire once before, but it still had three conductors on it. And they had pulled it out under where the carpet was, but they didn't want to do that because not a great idea because you have the wire under there and people walk over the carpet and can wear out the wire. So anyway, when I went to look at the thermostat, it said no connection. You know, because it's like a little access point in the closet and there's an access point um, in or there's the thermostat inside, which is kind of just like the computer and there's something like an access point that you would connect to your Wi-Fi with. And so it was saying, no connection. I've never seen that error before. I actually have a new thermostat too. They just replaced it last fall. And so I'm like kind of panicking a little bit because it's like, shouldn't that go back on? And I go, ah, it's probably rebooting. And it did after a couple, of, after a minute or two, it came back on, which was cool. Because uh, I felt a lot better then. And then after another minute, the therm uh, thermostat turned back on the heat pump or the air conditioning. So I have AC again. So uh, I got through that whole adventure unscathed, apparently, or as unscathed as you can be. Um, because it's going to be 95 the next week, 10 days, maybe two weeks, who knows? All right, well, I've been, I've been testing out doing IRLs in uh, YouTube, so this is really kind of more or less a test. So I'm just rambling, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's not even particularly apropos topic. And I'm just sitting out in the car in very hot weather. So I'm going to move along now and see how well this came out. And uh, we'll, go for the, we'll go from there. I'm, I'm also sometimes uh, live streaming gaming on Twitch. And I'm doing gaming on Kick too. I'm trying out the Kick platform. There are more, there are more streaming platforms now, so I have to figure out which ones I'm going to use for what. Uh, I've, I've done live streams on Twitch before I've gaming. I've done gaming on my gaming channel, Mungo's Game Room. Uh, that is. So, uh, and I also have Epic Dark Matters. It's another, it's another video game channel that where I take my, where I was using to take my yeah, Twitch live stream VODs and putting them on there just to kind of save them. All right, anyway, I hope you are all uh, inside where it's cool, or I hope, even more, I hope that it's a nice day wherever you are, and it's not like 95. It's, it's warm, a nice cool breeze, and uh, I hope you're out enjoying yourself. I will see you very, very soon. Until the next time, I'm Mungo Dark Matter. Whatever you do, enjoy the day. Uh, caveat emptor. See, yes. caveat emptor. Caveat beware. Oh, that's buyer beware. Carpe diem, carpe diem. Seize the day. Caveat emptor. <laughs>